In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the energy stored in an inductor and also in a magnetic field. So in this example, we have a current of 15 amps flowing through a 200 millihenry inductor. And so this is the electrical symbol of an inductor. And here's the current that flows through it. How much energy is stored in the magnetic field of this inductor? The energy stored is one half the inductance times the square of the current. So we have a 200 millihenry inductor, so that's 200 times 10 to the minus 3 henrys. And the current that flows through it is 15 amps. We need to square that value. So the potential energy stored in this inductor is 22.5 joules. And so that's the answer. Number two, what is the magnetic energy density of a 4.5 Tesla magnetic field? So let's see if we can derive an equation that will help us to get that answer. So let's start with the potential energy stored in an inductor if we have a current flowing through it. Now let's use a solenoid for example. The self-inductance of a solenoid is mu zero n squared times the cross-sectional area divided by the length of the solenoid. So let's replace L with that equation. Now the magnetic field created by a solenoid is mu zero times the number of turns times the current that flows through it divided by the length of the solenoid. So I'm going to solve for the current in this case. It's going to be B times L divided by mu zero times N. And so what I'm going to do is replace I with this quantity. So this is going to be BL over mu zero times N squared. So what we have now is one half mu zero N squared times A divided by L. And then we have B squared times L squared over mu zero squared times N squared. So we can cancel N squared. We can also cancel mu zero, but there's going to be one left over on the bottom. Now we can also cancel L, but there's going to be one left over on the top. And then we have the area times B squared. So the potential energy stored in a magnetic field is B squared divided by 2 mu zero times A times L. So this is the area times the length, which represents the volume. So the potential energy is going to be B squared over 2 mu zero times the volume. Now the energy density is the energy divided by the volume. So if we divide both sides by V, we could cancel this term. So therefore, the magnetic energy density is equal to the square of the magnetic field divided by 2 times mu zero. So let's go ahead and use that formula to calculate the magnetic energy density. So it's going to be B squared, which is 4.5 Tesla squared divided by 2 times mu zero, which is 4 pi, times 10 to the minus 7. So you should get a large number. It's like 8.057 times 10 to the 6 joules per cubic meter. So that's the magnetic energy density, or the energy density of the magnetic field. So now let's calculate the energy stored in this magnetic field if it's confined in this cylinder. So let's say if we have a horizontal cylinder. And let's say the radius of the cylinder is 20 centimeters. Let's say the height is 1.5 meters. 
the potential energy is going to be the energy density times the volume. So the energy density is B squared over 2 mu 0, and the volume we saw was area times length. But for this particular shape, the volume of a cylinder is going to be pi r squared times the height. Now we have this quantity. That's this number. So the total potential energy stored in the cylinder is going to be b squared over 2 mu 0, which is 8.057 times 10 to the 6 joules per cubic meter, multiplied by the volume of the cylinder, which is pi times the square of the radius, that's 0.20 meters squared times the height, which is 1.5 meters. So let's go ahead and see what this is going to be. So this is going to be 1.52 times 10 to the 6 joules. And so that's going to be the total potential energy stored in this cylinder due to the magnetic field that's in that cylinder.